Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Today we're going to be talking about the FlySky i6S fly mode feature, which is really a misnomer and we're going to talk more about that. But first, I want to do a quick demonstration and try and explain basically what fly mode is, uh, just so you get the idea and also let you know that personally, I don't think it's really that great. The whole fly mode thing, I don't think it's that great, and I don't think there are that many practical uses for it, especially if you're a beginner. So for the most part, I would say don't worry about it. If you have fly mode showing up on your menu screen, you should go in here and then just make it uh, touch the off button to turn it off and then exit and just pretend like it's not there. That's what I'm thinking at the at this moment anyway. So let me give you a quick demonstration and then we'll talk about how you can actually set this up if you want to use this. Okay, so here I have a servo with a, a big like barbecue skewer thing glued onto it to exaggerate the movement of the servo arm. And that's connected to our receiver here on our little trainer airplane. Now, right now, we have this servo connected to or controlled by a switch. Now, typically with a, a two-position switch, you have two positions. You have on and you have off, basically. It's going to be all in one direction or all the way in another direction. Oh, th oh this servo is freaking out on me. Come on, servo. Making me look bad. So the servo is going to go all in one direction or all the way in the other direction. So to show you this, we have the servo pointing right here. And I flip the switch, and then it goes all the way in the other direction, just like that. So essentially, we have on and off, or off and on. It kind of depends on how you have it set up. So the idea with the fly mode is what if we could break up this entire movement uh, with by, by having a combination of two switches and so being able to select different positions um, based on those two switches, whether they're on or off or in the middle, etc. And at this point, I do want to make it clear that I don't think that the fly mode feature is really intended for using like servos and that type of thing. I think it's more for beta flight, but I'm just using servos as a demonstration, a visual demonstration. Now let me hook this up so that we can use our fly mode with this servo. Now currently I have the fly mode feature set on channel six, so I'm going to change the servo to channel six. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the transmitter. I'm going to turn on the fly mode. And again, I've already I already have this set up just for this demonstration, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And let's let's put the switches just all the way in the up position for now. Now, now that we're in fly mode, what what the way that I have this set up is I've actually broken it up into nine different positions. So that whole range of movement, I actually decided to have nine individual positions. And the way that we get to those positions is by using a combination of turning these switches on or off. So in this case, I have, I'm using the two three position switches, which gives me a total of nine different combinations for the switches. Yeah, I hope that made sense. A lot of numbers here. So with switch B in the top position and switch C in the top position, we are at the one position or the first let's just call it the first position if I move switch C down a notch we go to position two if I move it all the way down we go to position three now switch B I move down and we go to position four and then on switch C I can go up and get to position five up one more and get to position six and then back to switch B I go down on switch B all the way down on switch B and then I'm at position seven and then now with at switch C, I go down one, I'm at position eight, and then down one more, and I'm at position nine. So basically, you know, the, uh, there is a little chart in the FlySky manual um, that does kind of help with this to, to show the uh, positions with like the switch positions and then like the, the sort of the channel uh, modes, they call it. So fly mode is really kind of a misnomer. Um, the reason why they call it fly mode is because in beta flight, in the modes tab, that is where you would set your, your arming switch and you'd set your turtle mode switch and your, um, you know, your, your angle mode switch, all these different types of switches or modes. Um, and this feature theoretically would be helpful 
for that because you could set a whole bunch of different modes using just one channel. For more on that topic, or if you don't have this radio that has the fly mode feature, check out Joshua Bardwell's uh, video about setting up all modes on one aux switch. Um, it's a really confusing video and really I don't, I just don't think it's really needed for most people unless you're doing like a whole bunch of stuff. The only reason why you would need it is if you really had to have uh, more modes than you do channels or, or switches. Now I'm going to show you how to set up fly mode if you wanted to use it. So what we're going to do is in the main menu here, we're going to tap on fly mode and we're going to turn it on. And I've, uh, I've reset all of the settings here, so we're starting fresh. So we have these different options here. So first of all, we have channel. Now the channel is going to be which channel you actually want the, the you, which channel you want the switches to control. So like for me, how I like to have things set up, I wouldn't select channel five because that's usually my arming switch. So we could say, you know, channel six, let's say channel six. Now here we have S1 and S2. Those are our two switches, switch one and switch two. So these are the two switches that we're going to be toggling between to get the different positions within the channel. For this example, we'll do switch B is going to be switch one. And switch B, let's go over our switches here. I don't know if you can see that, but it is kind of written on here, sort of embossed in here. Uh, we have switch A, switch B, switch C, and switch D. Okay, so switch uh, B, and C, B and C are the two three position switches. So that will give us a to our total of nine different modes or positions. So for switch two, let's select switch C. Okay, cool. So now you can see that when I move the switches, the mode changes. Now this, where it says mode three, or let's just, let's put them all the way up so where it says mode one, uh, this is actually changeable. So this, for example, we could, let's get rid of this and let's call it like, you know, if I can tap on these, we'll call it, um, let's call it, let's say angle for, uh, for like auto level. So we'll go back out here. So now we have angle. So that's kind of nice because then if we do set this up as a certain mode, we'll actually have words to tell us what the mode is. And here, that one, that's gonna stay the same no matter what. Um, that, that, I mean, that number changes based on the switch positions. So switches all the way down is number nine, you know, with the left one all the way down, but the right one in the middle, it's gonna be number eight, et cetera. You can see that on the chart, I believe, in the manual. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we've got all that set up. Now, this is, this is kind of the key right here. This 1500 right here is in microseconds, and 1500 is going to be actually in the middle of a channel because a channel ranges from 1000 1, microseconds to 2000 microseconds, 1000 being minimum and 2000 being maximum. So, with this number right here, 1500 is going to be basically in, right in the middle of the channel. So for example, we can take this and we can tap on that 15 and we can sort of swipe down here. So we could bring it all the way down actually to uh, 800, but that probably won't be very helpful. So let's say we start at the very bottom, which is going to be 1000. And then let's say when we bring down our uh, the next switch, let's say we want that to be, and that's going to be our second position. You can see by the two designated right there. Um, let's say we want that to be, you know, 1100. So we're, we're going up by um, 100 uh, microseconds. I'm not sure about the accuracy if you go even smaller than 100. And I don't really see why you would need to. Because, I mean, theoretically, I guess you could do like 1109 microseconds but so let's just say 1100 etc and you just kind of keep going on on with this so maybe you say like hey i want the i want both switches down when both switches are down i want this to be at let's just say 1800 for some reason because you know maybe you you have it set up in beta flight where the mode is you know a certain mode lands on 1800 and so that's what you have so 1800 so when the switches are all the way down they're at 1800 
uh, when they're all the way up, they're at uh, 1000. When this right one is down, it's at 1100, etc. So that is how you set this up. And then when you're done, you just go back and go back to the main screen. So you can see there now in the main screen, the fly mode, uh, it still says position one, or I guess kind of mode one. Uh, so that would be angle mode for, you know, in our imaginary situation here. And then if I flip this all the way down, all both these switches all the way down, which we decided would be 1800 microseconds, you can see here that it says 1800 microseconds. And this also happens to be the sort of um, mode nine or the ninth position uh, by default for this combination of switches. Okay, if that wasn't confusing enough, let's uh, connect up to Betaflight just to give you an example of what this looks like in the modes tab. Let's jump into Betaflight right here. Let's connect our quadcopter and we're all bound with the transmitter and everything. So just to show you here in the receiver tab, uh, this, is a, this is a pretty good example. So, so we decided that channel six would be our fly mode channel and channel six is going to be aux two because channel six is, you know, four, the first four channels are going to get taken up by pit, uh, pitch roll, yaw and throttle. And so then aux one, aux two. So to show you that here, when we move the switches here, we go from 1000 uh, to let's see 1100 and then 1500 and some of the you know we didn't set up all these but when we go all the way down we get to 1800 now the reason why some of these are not showing up uh, like when when switch B is in the middle position and I'm moving switch C that's because we didn't change them from 1500 so they're all technically I mean they're all still considered 1500 so you would just set those up however you want so just as an, as an example here I'll set these up We'll put all of them except for arming on aux two because I don't think you would want to mix these switches with your arming switch because I think your arming switch would you should keep that separate anyway. But just to show you how it looks with the little uh, tick marks here, we'll put all of these to aux two to show that you could have all of these different options on one switch. All right. So you can see here with the switches, both switches in the up position we're at 1000, but we, you know, we don't want all of these turning on at 1000, let's say. So let's say we want, we want air mode to turn on at 1000, something like that. Okay. All right. So right now that's basically, we could just do that with a normal three position switch. But if we switch this down all the way, then we can actually get four different positions on the same channel. And of course, in total, we could have nine if we wanted to. And then what you could also do on here is like, say you want, um, say you want air mode to continue through all of this, through the entire range. So basically air mode starts at 1000. Um, and then it continues, let's say it continues all the way up until, until it's time to turn on flip over after crash. So in this case, you know, you, you'd be, you'd turn on your beeper, you still have air mode, you turn on uh, acro trainer and you still have air mode. And then if you wanted to turn on um, flip over after crash, air mode would turn off. Again, this is not, this is just as an example, this, I'm not saying this makes sense or anything like that. It's just kind of to show you what it looks like, what you're looking for if you want to set this up on here. Now, this is all cool, I guess, if, if you like that, that having that feature. But my question is why wouldn't we just use one of the variable knobs? Now this, this isn't a good example right here because this is, this is a return to center kind of, you know, scrolly knob, but on the i6 and the i6x, you have these knobs on the top right here. So you can actually see what position they're in. I think it would make a heck of a lot of sense to, to put all these different modes on this knob because we have a, a, a huge number of options along the channel instead of just nine. So, so like, what's up, you know, what's up with that? Why not just do that? So let's hop over to the receiver tab, uh, tab here. So just to show you, so this variable knob, again, this is spring loaded back to center, uh, back to 1500, but you can see like we have a ton of different options, way more than nine different positions that we could have just with this variable knob right here. And so if we go over to modes, you know, this is, um, uh, we could see there that this is uh, aux three is what it is, aux three. 
it's channel seven aux three. So for example, we have actually we have a lot of these on aux three already, but we could have all of these on aux three. Let's just say that's on aux three, and let's let's make that on aux three and that on aux three. Just for this example, again, it, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but you see see how we can just we can scroll through like all of these different all of these different options just using this variable knob, and we have many, 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 many options. So what I'm thinking is, especially with the i6 and the i6x, why don't we just make, if there's not already one, I'll, I'll design one, a uh, some kind of a dial, sort of a, 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 a click dial selector system right here, so you could actually uh, have different settings for this knob instead of just sort of one smooth rotation. You'd have little click settings so that you could uh, program different fly modes in that way, and you'd have like an infinite number. Not infinite number, I mean, you know, you'd have you'd have a lot more than nine. All right, my quad's yelling at me, I gotta unplug it. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. I know this was like pretty confusing, but um, I, maybe this helps a little bit. If it did, let me know, leave me a comment. If you still have questions and you're like, I don't know what the heck is going on, leave me a comment, maybe, maybe I or someone else will be able to help you. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you again very soon.